Today I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of black bars on videos. Now this is a follow-up to my original video showing you how to do this, but I was only showing one way to do it, getting a lot of dislikes and comments saying, what is this? This is like worse than having black bars. So thank you for those negative comments because they're pushing me to do this video. Uh, there are really three main ways to get rid of black bars in videos. I'll be showing you all three in this video in order of how I do them uh, as a video professional. So. Uh, the, the way I most commonly do it is let's, let's always assume that it's a 16 by 9 video that you want to put out and your asset, whether it's a still image or a video file, is 4 by 3 for whatever reason. Um, of course, this goes for vertical video or stuff that's, that's very, very narrow. It might be black bars on top and bottom. Um, but for the sake of this, let's say a 16 by 9 final output and your asset that you're importing that you're getting the black bars on is 4 by 3. The first way you're essentially cropping your 4x3 asset to completely fill the frame. Good thing is, there's no black bars at all. Uh, if the asset is high enough resolution, it looks fine. The downside is you are losing data, in this case, on the top and bottom of your 4x3 asset. The second way is keeping all the information on that 4x3 asset and then just filling in that black space with uh, a blur situation. And this is the one that people didn't like, but I've seen this done in documentaries and on newscasts. I've done this on, on projects as well, um, but it's a style thing. It's a style choice. So, And the third way is actually changing the final video output to match it so that natively you're no longer exporting a 16x9. You'll be exporting a 4x3 video or, or in different case, if you're shooting vertical, it might be a 9x16 um, but you'll be exporting it so it's native to whatever the asset is. So you are literally getting rid of the black bars because the video file itself is the correct ratio. But we'll be going into all that. So jumping in, uh, I have a, a 16 by 9 timeline right now. I'm going to drag my first 4 by 3 asset into it. Yes, yeah, Stevie somehow got into my wife's dress and was running around the room like this. Fluffy thought it was hysterical and was like, look what Stevie's doing. So, okay, so this is the original one. You're kind of seeing a little bit of dark, little, you know, on the top and bottom. First way is I will blow it up to fit. At a minute, I'd start just by touching the sides. So just kissing the, the sides here. And then kind of repositioning it a little bit so that way it looks good. Now, in this case, maybe it's comical. Maybe you want to keep her face there. Uh, maybe you want to keep coming in a little bit more just to get his reaction. You can do that. But really what you're doing is you're positioning it um, to a way that looks good to your eye and what tells the story the best. I kind of like that where she's kind of poking into the side. Also, just keep in mind, by the way, my skill's at 98%, so uh, I'm not really losing much resolution here at all, actually. Once you go over 100% scale, now you're digitally zooming in on the image. So just be aware of that. All right, so let, let's say that's that's how we want it. That's it. You've you've lost the information on the top and the bottom. In this case, it's a style choice to say, you know what, I'm okay with that, so we're going to keep it. Um, that's the first way. All right, now let's make a new 16 by 9 timeline. Again, this is just this is just an AVHC 1080p 60 frames a second, so pretty standard 16 by 9 version two. All right, let's drag our second asset into it. All right, it's my wife. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Who cares? <laughs> What we're looking at here. All right, so this is a situation where let's say we want to keep every bit of this image. So I will zoom in a, uh, just so that, yeah, again, the top and bottom of the asset are just kissing the top and bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to actually duplicate this asset. So I will click on that in the timeline, hold down Alt, and drag up. So now what I've done is I've now created two identical layers with this. And what I want to do is I want to keep the top. The top one is what you're seeing. The bottom one is underneath it, literally. And what I'll do is I'm going to scale it up so it fills the entire frame. Okay. And then go into effects, find Gaussian blur, drag that over again to the bottom layer. And we're going to blur that bottom. And there's no right or wrong way to how much you blur. I would blur at least 35% because you don't want it to be distracting and only have it like 15%. You know, it, then it's like, wait, is that part of the image? So, you know. 50% looks good. You might want to go really high and say, you know, 118. If you don't zoom out enough, you will get on the outsides of it. See how it's like very it's hard to see, but you can kind of see how it kind of trails off the black. Click repeat edges. Let me just, yeah, repeat edge pixels. 
click on that. I just can't kind of keep zooming in. There we go. So it's gone. So sometimes you may get that. So just be aware that that option is there. Repeat edge pixels, and that'll fix it right on the absolute hairy edges of your asset. So again, whether this is a video or a still, this works the exact same way. Um, there you go. That that was the original way that I was showing in the other video that people were um, lighting pitchforks about. So some people don't like that blur. They want to just literally have nothing. They want it to be filling the entire frame. All right, so that's the second way. Third way. Um, now, I'm not going to create a new timeline for this the way I just did how you normally do. This third way is you're creating a timeline that is native to the video file. What I mean by that is, in this case, a four by three still. So the timeline will be a four by three timeline. It will no longer be widescreen. So in this case, this is the final image, this car. We're gonna right click it and say new sequence from clip. Now, if this was a video file, it would also take the exact frame rate that was native to it. If this was shot at 30 frames a second, 24, 60, whatever, um, it would be a 24, 30, 60 frame a second video, whatever it is, in the exact ratio. So it's like super kosher here. Like you can kind of move this around and like this is just it. That is the actual file. Um, now, downside of this is if you want to have a six, uh, 16 by 9 widescreen video, and insert it into this timeline, now you're gonna have bars on the top and bottom. So what you cannot do, it is impossible, is to have a four by three or vertical video or whatever it is um, in a native ratio like this and a 16 by nine. You can't have two different ratios in the same video timeline in the same project and remove the black bars in this way. So you're going to have to do one of the two solutions that I was showing you before if you want to keep it native. Because, you know, you might be shooting something that's, for some reason, 4x3, 98% of the time, but there's one clip that's widescreen or it's vertical, and you're going to have to make a choice as far as what you want to do creatively to get rid of the black bars, if you even decide to get rid of the black bars um, for that clip. So I hope that this helped you. If it did, give it a like. And if you have any other Premiere questions that has not yet been answered on my channel, make sure to hit me up either in the comments below or on my Twitter account here. I am very active in both places, and I will uh, do my best to respond to anybody, any questions you guys have, uh, maybe even with a uh, future tutorial. All right, take care, guys. Bye.